Hello. Welcome to this training for the Vanita Warm Shelter. My name is Pastor Dina Wolf, and I will be going through the training materials that we have uh, regarding our warm shelter for 2020. The document that you have provides all training for our volunteers for the warm shelter and includes the new guidelines for operations during COVID-19. Our mission statement is to provide emergency shelter to our neighbors during time of extreme weather or disaster. That's classified as when the temperature is 28 degrees Fahrenheit or below or other hazardous conditions. The community warm shelter operates from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. And you'll wanna make sure you check the website for our activation status. If you have questions, please contact the volunteer coordinators that are listed in our volunteer training information, Junie Gangle and Issa Jennings. So we have some expectations for our shelter. The church is the host for the shelter, but we are not here to evangelize. It's not a church thing. Rather, we are here for the people that we serve. So we need to be aware that there are different religious practices and different faiths. Our goal is to, is to be hospitable, to provide hospitality. And you can do those things through smiling, through being flexible and teachable. Please ask questions. The only stupid question is the one that's not asked. Be willing to assist where needed or asked. And there are some things that we don't do for our guests. We don't drive them or give them rides places. This is especially true during times of COVID. We don't provide them money and we don't judge or pry. If they wish to share with us, we listen. We have rules of respect that are expected for volunteers and for our guests. We want everyone to be safe, to be responsible, and to be respectful. Well-behaved pets are still welcome in our shelter and food and water can be provided. Alcohol and substance abuse is not permitted on our property, but that in of itself is not a reason for a guest to not be able to use our shelter. Drinking and use of marijuana and illegal substances is not allowed anywhere on our church property. If they wish to smoke, they need to go at least 10 feet from the one front door. What we are looking at is their behavior that could be caused by the use of alcohol and drugs. So there are certain occasions for which we will ask our guests to leave. And the team lead and those of you that are chaperones can ask guests to leave if they can't show respect for other guests, volunteers, or for themselves. And some of these examples, refusal to wear a face covering when inside and not in their six foot square or home, refusal to follow the social distancing guidelines by a disrespect of others. They're either their six foot home or by not staying six feet apart from others who are not within their pod or their living family. Excessive shouting or disruptive verbal outbursts. Behavior that creates an unsafe environment. Verbal or physical threats to themselves or other people. So you'll see in the training material that we have a three strike rule. For the first incident, they can be asked to leave for that night. The second incident, they can ask, be asked to leave for that night or a series of nights. And for the third incident, they will be banned for the season. And this is going to be especially true that we hold them to wearing the face coverings and the social distancing guidelines. This is for their protection as well as your protection. Bad language, disruptive arguments and fighting is not allowed on church property. And if a guest is suspected of having or leaving inappropriate items, this would be alcohol or drugs. They can um, also be reminded of that policy, that they shouldn't be having that, and they can be given the opportunity to remove it from the church property. If a guest cannot give a commitment or compliance to any of these guidelines, they will be informed that they cannot come to the shelter again. 
So the process to ask, ask guests to leave, this is really important for you to know. Again, the safety and security of you, our volunteers and of the guests is so important. We, will be, we have essentially someone who is our guest liaison on each shift. And that would be the person who would likely be interacting with the guests and could be the one who would be asking the guests to leave. If you're someone who is not comfortable and is not the one that's interacting directly with guests, then you will not be the one that's asking them to leave. It would be the guest liaison in this case or a team lead. So you want to address them directly. You want to address the behavior that they are not being in compliant with. And if they refuse to be compliant with whatever request that you are asking, um, then you can ask them to leave. And if they are not compliant with that, you can contact the team lead if the team leads to get, get involved. And you always want to let the team lead know if you've asked somebody to leave and document it in the book. But if they still refuse to leave, then you want to call the, um, the non-emergency number for the sheriff. And again, this includes not following the face mask, the, the face covering, and the physical distancing guidelines. Again, because those are so important for their safety as well as for yours. And then you want to document the incident in the notes for the next shift. Donations are accepted. Um, we don't accept all donations, um, especially now during COVID. Uh, we, and we also don't have space to store them. We don't have a space to put them out, but we um, do accept certain items and donations, um, paper products, especially because we're going to be using a lot of those, trash bags, coffee items. Um, people can donate family friendly DVDs, games, and books. Um, we will still have blankets, gloves, socks, hats, feet, and hand warmers, items to help keep the guests warm outside of the shelter. And if, you've, uh, if you are no aware of other items that wish to be donated, um, unless we're specifically asking for certain items, um, they can be given to Lilies of the Field over at Olivet Baptist. So some specific volunteer responsibilities. Volunteers are expected to remain awake and attentive and demonstrate effective judgment through each shift. They're expected to work within this diverse community to communicate respectfully and effectively with guests, staff, and community partners. And they need to be able to utilize the resources that are available. You wanna keep the pantry door locked during the time that our guests are in the fellowship hall and leave notes for the next shift, including any problems and good things that happen to end food issues. And during this time of COVID, volunteers are expected to follow the guidelines given about the face coverings, and the physical distancing guidelines, and also not coming to the shelter if you are sick. You also need to make sure that you sign in and that you take your temperature and fill that in each time you come. This training that we're provided is mostly virtual. If you have questions, um, there will be an opportunity to walk through the shelter to be able to see the shelter. Um, there will also be another video that you can watch um, that will have uh, that literally will walk you through the shelter so that you can see it. Um, but other training can occur. Um, specialized training especially will be necessary for those who are screening guests so that you understand that flow through, how to use the thermometer uh, that we are using, um, and also how to ask the questions of the guests and have them sign in properly. Someone who hasn't been trained um, cannot accompany a family member um, who has been trained. It's really important, especially this year with COVID, that everyone has been trained ahead of time. So again, if interested in training, send an email to vanitawarmshelter at gmail.com. We appreciate you arriving 15 minutes before your shift, at least 15 minutes before your shift. Right now with COVID, it might be better to arrive even a few minutes before that. This allows you to be able to check in, allows you and the volunteers to provide that, that crossover time to share notes and messages, and to be prepared to start your shift at the time that you need to, to start your shift. If you're going to be late or unable to fulfill your shift, please contact your team lead 
or one of the volunteer coordinators as soon as possible. Youth volunteers are allowed at the shelter, but they must be with some uh, parent or a guardian. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the section about how to volunteer. Um, you are going to want to go to VanitaWarmShelter.com and follow the steps there to sign in. If you have difficulties with that, send an email to VanitaWarmShelter at gmail.com and one of the volunteers coordinators can work with you to help get you signed up for that for a shift or shifts. But again, you can sign up. You want to sign up online. You want to make sure that you sign up online. If you're new, put new behind your name or that you're shadowing and that you can delete it. I want to touch quickly on our civil rights training. What's most important of the civil rights training is that you understand our non-discrimination statement. We are prohibited from discriminating on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, age, or disability. And you need to be able to follow that non-discrimination statement. We must keep everything confidential unless someone is going to harm themselves or someone else. And if that happens, if you're if you afraid that someone expresses something to you where they're gonna harm themselves or someone else, um, call the team lead um, who can make sure that um, they are, uh, that we can get them the help that they need. You see protected classes for uh, food bank programs, race, age, sex, disability, nation, origin, religion, political affiliation, military status, familial status, marital status, and sexual orientation and gender identity. I mean, we don't ask these questions of people, uh, but we need to make sure that um, if someone does disclose something to us that we're not discriminating against them. Um, during this time of COVID, our restroom facilities are single use only and so they are for either gender, male or female, and, um, but only one person at a time should be using the restrooms. Again, best practices, be aware of your own personal assumptions and do your best to keep them to yourself when working with clients. Be prepared to provide program information in alternative formats with people with disabilities. Again, just some reminders that that proselytizing is not allowed. Be aware of actions or comments that could cause a negative impact or create a barrier to service. Sharing information about religious programs is fine, but make sure that the client understands that they do not have to participate in any way to receive services from us. So let's go through the Venita Warm Shelter operating procedures. When the temperature reaches 28 degrees, then that is when the shelter typically activates. We operate from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. Anyone coming in during those hours will have a warm place to sleep until we reach our capacity. Now this year, because of COVID, the shelter only has a capacity indoors of 12 to 13 people. We do have some outdoor shelters that can allow us to have um, up to anywhere from six to 12 additional individuals. We also will use one of those shelters uh, as an isolation space if we have anybody come who is exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19. Everyone who comes to the shelter will receive a hot meal and a takeout breakfast. If we do reach capacity, which would be um, potential, that would be 13 inside. And then again, you know, as, as, as few as six in the shelters outside, which would be 18, um, then we will, we can potentially open up other spaces if, it, if that situation occurs. And we'll try to work with the community if, if we have absolutely no space available. Guests are welcome to leave and return as needed, but they should come in and check in 
between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. They will receive a sticker that shows that they've been screened and scanned and then they are free to come and go as they need. As we mentioned, the shelter provides a hot meal and a to-go breakfast. We will still have DVD movies available. Um, so, and, and also some games that they can play. So here is the contact list. So um, the contact, they're, they're the Warm Shelter Contacts Google Sheet, which is available, um, which is only available to our, uh, all of you are listed on that contact list. It's available for to our volunteer coordinators. So um, if you have information, you wanna make sure that your information is complete on that contact list. Um, so that would be your name, um, your phone, at least a phone number and email best way to contact you. Um, and we will need that information when you first come to volunteer at the shelter um, so that we can have that for contact tracing purposes. Our overview of shifts, again, the dinner shifts arrive at 4 p.m. because we open at five and dinner will be served at 5.30. If you're a screener, you wanna arrive at by 4.45 or sooner. If you're a guest liaison, also 4.45 or sooner. Our overnight one chaperones arrive at 7 p.m. and are there till midnight. Our overnight two are there from midnight to 5 a.m. So again, arriving at 11.45. The morning takeout and breakfast shift arrives at 5 a.m. and is there to 8 a.m. And at 7.45 a.m., additional morning cleanup crew would arrive and they will be out of there as soon as they're done cleaning, but hopefully no later than 9.30 a.m. Again, we need one person from each shift to be willing to be a liaison. So we have an evening liaison in addition to our cooking staff. And then we need one liaison on each of the chaperone shifts that are willing to interact with guests and in the common spaces if needed. The other person will stay, a person or persons will stay in the kitchen. All wear masks, but the liaison may have additional PPE that they will wear. Um, so they may wear a gown if they need to, they may wear gloves, um, but at the very least they will have a, um, a face covering and um, also perhaps a shield, face shield. The detailed schedule, again, 4 p.m. the dinner shift arrives. 4.45, the dinner and initial guest liaison arrive. Doors open at five. The guests may arrive outside before five, um, but they need to not come inside until 5 p.m. when the shelter opens. 5.30, dinner is served. First shift at seven. Quiet time begins at 10. That's typically lights out. Midnight, the second shift arrives. 5 a.m., your morning shift arrives. Guests are woken up generally about 7 a.m. and they receive their, um, their morning takeout items um, from 7 to 8. 8 a.m. the doors are closed and locked and at 9.30 a.m. the final cleanup is complete. So we have volunteer roles. I'm gonna go a little more in depth into each volunteer role. And if you are interested in being a, any of these other roles, like a, specifically a team lead, which is a really key role, you are able to be a team lead as well as be um, an other, have another position. So you can be a team lead and a chaperone or a team lead and a liaison or a team lead and a screener. Um, you can do more than one thing. So the, the activation communicator gets word from our activation lead that the shelter is gonna be open. And that particular person contacts the sheriff and the fire department and places the yellow ribbons on the gates at 8th Street and Territorial. And that's how our guests know that we are gonna be open. The team lead is responsible for overseeing the staffing of the warm shelter activation. So working with the volunteer coordinators to make sure that it, everything is staffed. And they are on call. So they don't necessarily have to be at the shelter. 
but they need to be on call and reachable by phone in case of behavioral issues or a volunteer not showing up for a designated shift. They, can, they need to be able to be willing to fill a shift if a volunteer does not show up for a shift and another volunteer is unable to be found or cannot fill in. Team leans are not necessarily assigned for the duration that we're open if it's multiple days, but they are typically there's a different team lead for each night. And the activated team lead should make sure that the shift notes and sign up information from the previous night is put in the warm shelter notebook. And they want to make sure that that information is complete. Again, especially contact information. Again, a shelter is typically activated in extreme weather conditions or disaster. When it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit or below. When we have availability, so when we're fully staffed, we have to be fully staffed before we can open. And the activation decision is then made by the warm shelter activation lead. So if we are not fully staffed within a few hours of opening, then we will have to say, no, we can't open for that night. We try to, we try to make the call of being open at least 24 hours in advance. But for this season, um, be looking for shelter to be on standby much earlier. So if the activation lead sees that in the next week, it looks like we are gonna have several nights where it could be cold, it could be 28 degrees or below, or if it looks like we're gonna have a spate of miserable weather where it's really cold and damp and very uncomfortable, then that activation lead will let the um, warm shelter volunteer coordinators know um, that they need to uh, put the shelter on standby. The activation lead position is a very important one and then it needs to be somebody who checks the weather on a regular basis. We use the NOAA site for our weather forecasts and they need to be able to be decisive and say yes we're going to open or no we're not. Um, that decision can be made in consultation with the volunteer coordinators. Um, so if you're in, again if you're interested in that role that's a role that never has to be on site. Um, so if, if you want to be engaged in that way um, contact the volunteer coordinators and let them know of your interest in that. The dinner shift again starts at 4 and goes until approximately 730. They are responsible for setting up the beverages in the kitchen. Again because of COVID we are keeping all of our beverages into the in, in the kitchen. There will be nothing just sitting out in the common area. Um, the food served in the warm shelter also has to stay separate. Um, it, we keep we keep it separate intentionally, um, and we keep it separate from our community meal um, food. It's usually something very simple, as opposed to those who have been with our community meal. You know that our community meal can sometimes be a little more elaborate, um, but especially with COVID, because everything is being served in to go fashion, everything is simple. And this year, especially, everything is served in to go fashion. So when the doors were open, the guest liaison will show the guests to their assigned sleeping location. So the guests will come in, the hand washing station will be there, they will be asked to wash their hands, they will meet the screener, so they will have their temperature taken, they will um, be asked the COVID question, so they'll be screened, and then the guest liaison will show them to their assigned sleeping location. The mats will be set out ahead of time. Uh, and for the first time the shelter is open, the sleeping bags will also be um, already there and set up and ready to go in each sleeping location. Um, one of the rooms in the church is the Lamar room. It's in our hallway. And that is a designated space for a family or a couple. Um, it can, it, it's only big enough for one person if, um, if we don't have a couple or a family that's there. Um, so it would be the last space that is filled within um, the building. We have eight spaces in located within the fellowship hall, two in the breezeway, one in the cry room, and up to two in the Lamar room. And then again, I mentioned outdoor shelters. We will have up to six outdoor shelters available um, if we so need. And one of those outdoor shelters will be designated as 
a space, an isolation space for someone who may show up with symptoms. At 5 p.m. dinner is served. Guests will be served through the serving window. There is plexiglass which separates the kitchen from um, the main fellowship hall. The kitchen door should, should stay shut at all times. So the meal will be placed one at a time through the serving window. Each guest will come up, get their food, and then they can eat either in their six foot little home um, or they can eat outside because those are the only times that they can have their face coverings removed is when they are in their, their six foot box home. This group also will may do dinner prep if there's time. They prep the takeout bagged uh, breakfast for the next morning, which is often hard boiled eggs or other easily portable items. And then clean any dishes that need to be cleaned and um, clean the kitchen. The initial entry screener person will arrive at 445, if not earlier. This individual is responsible for doing the initial COVID-19 screens with volunteers and guests as they arrive. And there will be additional on the job training for the first time that you come to be a screener. The screener will have to wear proper PPE, so a mask and a shield, gloves. They do not have to wear a gown unless they wish to. This again mentioned the screener will receive specific training when they arrive how to use the temperature gauge and how to give the ask the guests the COVID questions and to make sure that they understand the expectations coming into the shelter. And you'll be provided with everything that you need to make that happen. The screener also will provide a mask to the guests if they do not have one. The guest liaison will arrive at 4.45 p.m. again, if not sooner. This is the initial guest liaison. So it's not part of the team of liaisons and, um, and the people that come at um, midnight uh, and the, the extra teams, the chaperone teams, and works closely with the entry screener. So once the entry screener has made their screen, their designation, then the liaison will take each guest to their six foot home and make sure that they have their sleeping bag and that everything, all their belongings are in that space. Um, if the shelter has been open a previous day, the liaison will help the guests locate their sleeping bag because each guest will have bagged and, and tagged their sleeping bag and make sure that it gets to where their, their sleeping space. And the liaison can also answer questions about the guests have about and provide ongoing education about physical distancing, where they can eat, face coverings, and the single bathroom, single person bathrooms. They also um, will be the, the person that um, can do answer qu additional questions and do periodic walkthroughs of the shelter. And, um, we also will need somebody to be available to just focus on someone who is symptomatic. If someone comes in and is symptomatic, if they have a fever, a new onset of cough, of shortness of breath, um, they will be placed into this outside shelter. And if they're exhibiting these new onset symptoms, um, they will be directed to that place so that liaison needs to guide them to that location. Um, We're keeping them outside of the church building. Ask um, one of the other volunteers to contact Dr. Willie Foster, or you can call the team lead and the team lead can make that phone call. And they will arrange for individu that individual to be support, uh, transported then to a COVID shelter, most likely the next morning. This person or person should have their meals brought to them outside. Um, so we'd like to have one person just uh, for that individual. And again, they should wear proper PPE, which is a mask, gown, and gloves. Our overnight chaperones um, arrive by 645. Their shift starts at seven. They um, can offer movies or games, although with, again, that would be the, the whoever's being the guest liaison of those two people. Um, and the start of quiet time is at 10, that's lights out. So that's really when everybody should be quiet. And at that time, then the two guests will likely be uh, inside uh, together. The overnight two shift is from midnight to 5 a.m. That's quiet time. Typically that's a really quiet period of time. You probably won't have to uh, leave your kitchen space. Um, to go be among the guests at all, unless there's any issues. 
Um, again, as, uh, as a volunteer, you're expected to wear your face coverings at all times when you're with somebody who is not in your same family unit. Um, and you can go to, um, but if you do have to leave the kitchen, say to go to use the washroom, um, you wanna make sure again that you have your face covering if you have been able to take it off for some reason. And you can give yourself mask breaks. So um, you can step outside for a moment to get a, a mask break, um, to you know, take a couple of deep breaths, uh, you know, as long as one person remains inside the kitchen at all times. Um, the morning cleaning group um, comes in from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Um, if it hasn't already been done, they're doing the breakfast prep, which is ensuring that the takeout bag breakfasts are prepped. And these items can include boiled eggs, pastries, or fruit. Wake the guests at about 7 a.m. And then between 7 and 8 a.m., they are receiving those bagged takeout breakfasts. Many guests will eat them right there in the shelter. And again, they are welcome to eat them within their six foot space. They are responsible for bagging up their own sleeping bags, bagging and tagging them. So make sure that all guests have removed their belongings and as necessary, remind them that they can't leave their belongings on the property. The door is officially closed to the shelter at 8 a.m. Um, so you can make sure that the doors are locked. Um, the additional cleaning crew will come in at 745. They can work within the shelter um, with the doors locked. The additional cleanup crew comes in at 7.45 a.m. Um, and they will have provided checklists that they can that you can use to clean for what to clean and what items to clean them with. Um, all cleaning um, items will be provided um, and are available in our janitorial closet. So the kitchen should be cleaned by the morning volunteers. Again, this is cleaning up the beverage service, tossing out any food not consumed. Um, checking the ovens and refrigerators. If there's any leftovers, um, you're going to want to uh, clean stoves and countertops. You're going to want to make sure you're wiping down any surfaces um, that have been touched, um, paying a special, a special attention to those surfaces. Um, again, that's countertops. Um, that's any, any place really that's been touched. So uh, handles, things like that. Um, you're, if, if any dishes have been done, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the sanitizer is turned off and clean the drains, run the garbage disposal and rinse the, rinse the sinks and make sure that everything has been turned off so the stoves and faucets. The hall and breezeway will also need cleaning and these, these, these will be, this will be done typically by the additional cleaners that come in at 745. Again, the guests are responsible for doing their own tagging and bagging of their sleeping bags. Ensure that all guests have removed their belongings. The chairs will need to be wiped down. The sleeping mats will need to be wiped down. Um, the floor will need to be at least, at the very least, dry mopped. If the shelter is not going to be open that night, then the floor should be mopped. If it is going to be open that, that night, um, it may not need to be mopped um, again. Um, the rug should be vacuumed. The breezeway will need to be vacuumed. The cry room and the Lamar room will need to be vacuumed, especially if they've been used. Um, and if the shelter will not be open that night, the outdoor warm shelter sign will need to be brought inside. The bathrooms need to be cleaned after every shelter shift, after every, every shelter night we're open. Both the bathrooms in the hallway as well as the additional bathroom in the cry room if the cry room has been used. Again, um, using the checklists and um, making sure that they're cleaned thoroughly, paying attention to um, high touch areas. Take out the garbage and recycle items. The garbage and recycling containers are located on the uh, far side of the driveway, the, the east driveway of the church. The TV and DVD remotes should be wiped down and placed on the first shelf uh, in the pastor's office in the box marked, marked TV and DVD remotes. The last person out um, will likely be someone from the cleaning staff. So this person, the additional cleaners, need to make sure that the thermostat is turned down, double check and make sure that the bathrooms are done, turn off all the lights, and make sure that the doors are locked. And this would be the doors to the fellowship hall in particular. Um, so any of the outside doors, you want to make sure that all the outside doors and windows are secure. 
We have expectations for all our shifts. You need to make sure that you sign in, you have your temperature taken, and you answer the COVID-19 questions. Face coverings must be worn at all times when inside the building, unless you are in a kitchen, in the kitchen with a related family member and the door and front window are closed. Keep the kitchen door closed. Unless you are the designated guest liaison, remain in the kitchen during your shift. Please wear a name tag. That way we know one another. If working with, your, with guests, wear the proper PPE. So make sure you have the face coverings and the shield and the gloves. Encourage frequent hand washing and sanitizing for yourself and your guests. The initial screener will ensure that every guest signs in and understands the behavior expectations. We will have signs posted in the shelter about the expectations, particularly six foot distancing and wearing of face coverings. The guest liaison will screen um, any volunteers that arrive. Um, but if a guest arrives after 9 p.m. and there's, which we obviously have volunteers that are arriving after 9 p.m. Um, and there's still room in the shelter, the guest liaison, whoever the guest liaison is on, um, on that particular shift, will screen the guests and direct them to their sleeping location. Provide beverages um, after the meal. Again, all beverages are kept in the kitchen, so water, tea, or coffee can be provided to them. So they can come to the window and request that. Pass the coffee, tea, or water to the guest through the window. The guest liaison should do a periodic walkthrough. So check the bathrooms and, um, and clean as you go. So wipe down these places frequently. Remind guests that they cannot leave their belongings at the church. Everything they bring in must be removed except for their sleeping bag, which they will, will, will be theirs for the entire season. The morning shift to direct their, their guests to bring their sleeping bag, in, to put it in their the plastic bag and make, their name, make sure their name is on it, and it will be stored safely until the next time the shelter is open. The sleeping mats will be left in place unless for some reason the building is going to be used um, for some other reason uh, in between shelter nights. Again, you want to change the thermostat if it needs to be, uh, it needs to be lowered. Typically, we keep it at 65 degrees. Uh, as the, our guests are used to sleeping where it's, um, where it's cold. And so 65 degrees is actually warm for them. Um, any dishes that need to be done, uh, there's instructions on how to wash, run the dishwasher and trash and recycling should be taken out. So that's the expectations. Um, if you have any questions uh, specifically about all this training material, it's, it's a lot of material. Um, please go ahead and send those questions um, to the Venita Warm Shelter at gmail.com and our volunteer coordinators, Junie and Isa, will get back to you. Again, we appreciate your willingness to volunteer and we thank you so much uh, for your willingness to be trained and to, again, help us provide our guests with a warm place to sleep, especially during these difficult times. Um, please make sure that you send an email to the Venita Warm Shelter at gmail.com uh, indicating that you have viewed uh, this training video um, and again with any questions that you might have uh, regarding the Warm Shelter. Thank you again for being a part of this training. We appreciate your work.